Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris man. As always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. I have another piece of gear for sale. And before I stick it up to the camera, I'm going to say this. I've worked with hundreds of sound modules throughout my professional career. And my all-time favorite at that time was the Roland JV880. The sound, I mean, first of all, it was just extremely powerful unit. I mean, you turn it on, crank it up a little bit as far as the volume, boom, it's in your face. And some of the greatest strings I've ever heard in a module. And then came along my all-time favorite that just blew everything out the water. Because with this module, and the company is EMU, EMU is one of those companies that get it. And what I mean by that is this. Like with the JV880, the, uh, the demos in there, they were composed, they were like jazz compositions from Berkeley, uh, Juilliard musicians. And here's the problem with that. The guys that use those sound modules don't play that style of music. So why give them a demo that's totally out of the genre that they play? EMU came around and said, we get it. These are modules that are used in hip hop, R&B, and pop. So we're going to have demos that would reflect the genre of music that people would, that would buy these would use. And then another thing about the EMU Proteus 2000, as far as the, well, I'm going to say this, you know, you buy these other sound modules and you say, man, why don't my compositions don't sound like Jim and Lewis, my, those, the pianos on Jim and Lewis compositions, I can't find them in the unit. That's because they shape their sounds. They have professional sound shapers because they don't usually do it. They get some guys that know how to, you know, change it up and, and make it sound really sweet for R&B. So you wouldn't find their kind of patches in those type of modules again until the MU Portis 2000 came around. Again, they got it. It's like, we're going to already put these sounds that you hear on the radio in this box. So once you plug it up, start going through the patches, you can find something that sounds very similar to something on the radio, like an R. Kelly jam, you know? They get it, you know? It's the baddest sound module that I've ever heard, and it was, is, or was one of the most slept on. Most people was like, oh, EMU, uh, I'm going to get me a, a Triton, or I'm going to get me a, a Yamaha motif and all that, you know? The, the popular... Uh, gear at the moment everybody wants the DX7, the M1, you know, so they really paid no attention to the EMU when they came out. They they small fries. It's like, no, they're not. They kick anybody's ass out there module-wise. So I'm parting with it, and one reason why I'm parting with this, because I got three. I told you guys, when I like something, really like it, I buy them pairs of three. So I'm three deep, so I'm like, I can part with one. So, you know, uh, I'm going to stick it up to the camera in a minute, but I can't say enough about this module. I mean, I've written a lot of tracks using the patches in there. And it sounds like the stuff that you would hear off the radio, you know. It's still a ball. It sounds good, but it don't kind of have those patches that I hear on the radio on, on you know, a genuine cut or R. Kelly cut or, you know, Jeff, uh, Justin Timberlake cut or... You get all that stuff already packed in there. This module has over 1,100 sound patches. And like I told you about the Versioso module that I'm selling, which is also an EMU product, uh, ingenious feature where you select the patch and you hit audition and you hear a, a, a little composition in there that they wrote to let you hear that particular instrument in action. And it sounds great. <clears throat> Stick it up to the camera. Let me turn it on for you. It works. No scratches, no knobs missing. There's no scratch on top of this thing at all. Not one. Now, I'm show you the back. MIDI. Now, what's so cool about 
YouTube. There's some people that do some really wonderful things out the can and say they're hard and they don't cost you a dime. There's a guy, I think he got about 15 videos going through some of the sound patches in this thing. And as, like I said, I was already so when I first got turned on to this module several years ago. And he was kind enough to take you through so many of those patches. And I'm like, just five of those would have sold me on this to buy this. And there were literally hundreds of those, those, those samples, those demos, you know. I'm like, after the fifth one, I'm like, where can I get me one? You know, I already had one, but I'm like, if I was just being turned on to this, you know. So, uh, this is interesting. I'm going to say this quickly. Before the pandemic, like I told you guys, nobody kind of knew about that unit. They were sleeping on it. And I was sending them for us. $175, $200. I'm like, if I didn't have two already, I would buy another one. And then I did buy another one. And then I bought another one for my daughter. So I bought a total of actually about five of these. And back then, before everybody knew about it, like I said, they were going for maybe $175, $200, $250 tops. And then when the pandemic kicked in, I'm thinking it's going to go lower because a lot of people have lost their jobs. You know, they got bills to pay. So the prices usually go down in this situation. But for some reason, it's just the opposite. They shot up. You know, I see these in here now for $700. And actually, they're worth every bit of that $700. You know, and uh, the cheapest one on Reverb is probably about $550. Uh, eBay, about $500. Uh, Guitar Center had one, and I kid you not, in less than 10 minutes, it was gone. I seen it because, you know, I check uh, Guitar Center website every day, and I seen it, and I didn't need one because I already had three. But then I went to the washroom, I kid you not, I came back, gone. It's like, they said, oops, or something like that, or, this is missing or something. But I was like, man, I'm like, I'm not surprised. I had one and I kid you not. I was in the middle of buying it because the guy only wanted like 200. I'm like, yeah, I got to get another one. Just, just got to have another one, especially for this price. While I was in the process of placing my order and entering my PayPal information, it didn't go through. And I said, what's going on? Somebody had sold or bought it while I was trying to buy it. That's just how and demand these things are. And I don't want to part with this one because like I said, when I, I like something, I buy them in pairs of two or three. But I do have two other ones. So I'm like, you know, I, I really don't need three. I mean, I really don't. So, on oh, fire, Chris. So we're looking at 350 for this because this is the baddest sound module that has ever been designed. Plus $40 shipping and handling. And I'll leave a link down here so you guys can hear some of these sounds in here because like I said it's over 1100 and it was one of the first sound modules that had 128 voices and you might ask yourself what is that and I'm not a tech guy I can only say is normally sound modules are 68 voices polyphony and they tend to sound thin unless you stack them this is twice as much of the sound spectrum as the 64 that's one reason why it sounds so good, because it, it was the first sound module that was 128 voices. And even before I noticed that, even though it had it across the panel there, I noticed how thick the sounds were. Because I'm going to say this and then I'm going to sign off, because this is important. Whenever you're doing multi-timber sequences, meaning that inside one unit, one sound module, you play a bass part. And then... Uh, you go back and you play a piano part of MIDI to channel two. Then channel three, you add something else, channel four, and you can stack them up into 16. But whenever you do that with 68 voices, it sounds thin as hell. It's like, damn, why is the strings so thin? And that's because the more sounds you use, the thinner they become. Because it's like, how can I put this? Because again, I'm not technical. If you just got two sounds, not bad, but when you add a third one, it's like it's stretching and it's stretching and it's making it thinner and, it, and it's kind of taken from the one before. So it sounds thin by the time you try to do eight tracks, one module. But when you use this, and I've used this to do this, that I've written a whole composition just with that unit. Because normally I made at least four sound modules together and then run them into my board and get a stereo effect and it's real big and fat. 
But with this, you can do that with just this one unit because there's 128 voices. This is real fat. I'm like, I ain't got to add anything. I ain't got to stack anything. You know, it sounds great. You know, so this module is a monster. You know, again, that I'm getting on board with everybody buying right now, the motif and the trident and all that. I want to be like everybody else. That's fine if what you're doing or buying gets the job done. Because, <clears throat> I mean, uh, I've heard some of these new stuff. It's like, I'm not impressed. I mean, I'm just not. It's nothing like, whoa. You know, so again, I'll leave a link down here so you guys can hear some of these sounds. Uh, my PayPal information right down there, 350 uh, $40 shipping and handling. Uh, it'll go out the next business day. United States Postal with tracking and with a signature required so they won't just leave it on your door. They ring your bell and have you sign it and you physically take it from the mailman. So uh, I'm going to sign off, but uh, this is a monster. Trust me, this is a monster. It's a monster. I mean, nothing more I can say about this thing. Uh, it smokes all these other sound modules. So until next time, take care and thanks for watching.